Very, very excited uh, about tonight's whiskey tasting. I've been a, a big fan of Manly Spirits. They obviously make gins, botanical vodkas, liqueurs, uh, about 30 minutes uh, north of the Sydney CBD off the bridge or, or jump on the ferry. We're just chatting about that. Uh, but tonight we are talking about their brand new whiskey release, uh, which is called Coastal Stone. Just letting a few more people in. We've got five expressions. Apologies for anyone still waiting on their kits. Uh, Australia Post is um, yeah, in the news. Everyone's hopefully um, seen and, and heard. Um, we're recording the session tonight as well. So if you want to come back and rewatch it, I'll send out the YouTube link tomorrow. Uh, for anyone who wants to re-catch up, but otherwise, yeah, looking for a fun night. We are drinking some new make and some higher ABV spirits, so uh, please don't drink and drive and maybe even get a glass of water um, in case uh, you want to dilute some, especially the new make to your sort of palate. Um, it's 63.5%, but we'll get chatting to that in a minute. Otherwise, um, I've just muted everyone to get the background noise down, um, but if you have any questions, please just jump into the live chat and I'll interrupt our two wonderful Distillers, uh, to, to answer your questions, please grill them with questions. They love questions. Uh, these these legends um, outside of the distilling world, we're in the oil world. So they're yeah, distilling and, and sort of refinering is in their blood and they've been doing it for a lot longer than most people in the industry in Australia here. So they, they have a wealth of knowledge and, you know, making oil, refining oil and refining whiskey. I would say it's a very similar sort of, uh, you know, there are some things that cross over. Reg and, and David, welcome. Uh, Thank you, David. Lee. Yes, definitely links to both oil and whiskey, and both of us coming from separate companies, one from Shell, one from Caltech. So um, interesting meeting of mind. Joining together. It's much better to make whiskey, though, than jet fuel and diesel, I'll tell you what, or bunker fuel oil. <laughs> bunker fuel, yes. yes. So, David, uh, take us through the new make to kick things off. It's always good to get whiskey in the hand. Well, I will anyway. So the first one, let's get some um, whiskey or pre-whiskey in your hand. So if you've got one, you make spirits. So I'll give you a little bit of time to pour a little bit of there in your glass. Why are you doing that? So I'm David Whitaker. So I'm one of the founders of Manly Spirits Co. Um, Vanessa, my wife's not far away. She'll be here shortly. I'm, I'm pretty sure she'll pop her head in. Um, we've been going about five years and our whiskey's just released. So um, this is really our first session um, of talking about Manly Spirits Whiskey. So thanks for listening. And it's wonderful to be here talking about it. Um, Reg, do you want to introduce yourself? Reg, Cheers. Paps. Thank you, David. Uh, Reg Paps, distiller at Manly Spirits, production manager. Um, so I run the floor, look after the stills. Um, responsible for making what David has in his hand right there, which is our new make spirit. Um, so been with Manly now two years, which is absolutely flown by. It's been a whirlwind ride two years. Uh, we've put down a lot of whiskey and happy to say that we laid down cask a thousand in recent weeks. So we're certainly making some progress. That's for sure. We did. We did. That's why it's really wonderful and exciting to kind of get a few of those casts, you know, out there with our sherry cast, which release, which we'll talk about a bit later. But um, yeah, we're just really starting our journey. You know, whiskey's a, a labor of love. Um, you know, we're, we're four years into it, but, you know, it's, we're going to be a lot longer than that doing it. And some of our expressions will be a lot longer, but um, it's really exciting to kind of have something that's, that's had some oak and time to turn it from, new make into spirit. We'll talk all about it. Um, anyway, have a little, I'm going to have a little sniff of it first. Then we're going to have a sniff and a little taste. And then we'll talk about how, how we make this stuff. Um, I'm presuming this crowd's probably tasted a bit of new make. Has people tasted it before generally? Nods? Yeah, everybody. I'll yeah. put your hands up if, you, if you've uh, yeah, had new make before. Nods, yep. Yep. Reg and I like drinking it off the still. We stick our yes. nose underneath the parrot beak and um, have a little taste. That's that's just quality control. Uh, it is. Even, I'm not sure about your wife, Reg, but my wife didn't used to drink whiskey. Now she basically loves, if I give her a 40 ABV, she goes, that's a bit weak. She loves the 60 stuff. Anyway. Uh, very good nose. On Very good nose, yeah. Pick, yes, can pick profile a whiskey quite well doesn't drink a lot of it but has an exceptional nose oh vanessa right so have a little sip and then we'll talk about it talk about it. so it's it's sweet and malty 
and it's so quite a light spirit. Six for sixty-three ABV and unaged. I think it's pretty amazing. But um, look, if we want to talk, our view on whiskey is you've got to put a lot of effort into how you craft the new make spirit. Sounds obvious, but um, we certainly do. So we're grain to glass. So you know we start with we mash our barley. We use Australian um, barley malt. And uh, yeah, so we do that whole bit. And a bit about our mashing, Reg, anything interesting about our mashing? Uh, I mean, all of us that have come into the company start in the brew house to make whiskey. I mean, there's no point someone coming in and just learning how to run a still. You, you really need to grasp the entire process from the bags of grain that come in to how we greased it, how that equipment works, how the mills work, how everything is an integral part of what you're having that glass in front of you right now. Um, we teach our brewers to be consistent in everything they, they do from temperatures, conversion temp, strike temp, everything. We, we pay particular attention into how it's crafted from grain, um, how we convert the starches and the grain into our wort and then how we pitch it and how we treat it. So it's it's not a process that can be rushed. It's a process that requires time and attention and a lot of input and love from our brewers. And that's what we try and instill into them that whiskey is not just something brown in a bottle in a Dan Murphy's. It's something that has been crafted from the ground up by dedication, love and people who wanna make whiskey. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, yeah, we use, um predominantly Australian barley. We started off predominantly in ale malt. We kind of do a bit of pale as well, but pale and ale. Mostly it's peated. We, we do a little bit of peated um, just because I'm, you know, Jesus, I love Ardbeg and Laphroaig and Bamor and all those ones. So I love them. So how can I not make a little bit? But um, so we do run a little bit of peat um, and I'm kind of laying down those barrels for the future to do little bits and pieces with. But our primary thing is Australian whiskey. So, you know, we don't really have peated malt in Australia of any note, of any volume. So that's not our predominance because it's kind of not Aussie. Doesn't mean I don't love it and we won't do a bit. But um, yeah, Australian malts generally. Um, yeah, we do just have, we do a nice long fermentation, about five days for those who are a bit geeky in their um, whiskey distilling knowledge um you kind of get um the saccharomyces yeast kind of chew all the sugars up and then you get the lactobacillus kind of just adding lots of flavors at the ends so we want we use the um a, a, a ale yeast and a distilling yeast because we want to get that estuary profile if you like um there's lots more we can talk about with that but i'll bore the hell out of you so i won't go on for too much longer but anyway a couple couple questions are starting to come in yep uh, and, and just before I do it, because we've got a few people who are brand new to whiskey, but basically okay. the, the, the 32nd and, and jump in, guys, if I've said it wrong, a recap of how to make whiskey is you take barley, you malt it, you grind it into a flour, you basically add hot water, a bit of yeast. Uh, it's an unhopped beer at this stage. You don't add the hops. Yep. You distill it twice, and then you come out with this clear spirit called New Make Spirit. Then in Correct. Australia, you put it into an oak uh, container. Uh, it can be a bourbon cask, a pinot cask. We're going to go through a few of these different expressions later today for a minimum of two years legally to be called whiskey in Australia. In Scotland, it's minimum of three years and around the world, there's different regulations, but that's whiskey making 101. So what we're having this new make spirit is spirit that is unaged whiskey. It hasn't spent any time in the cask. That's why it's clear of the still. Thanks, and drinks, drinks really well with a ginger beer. If you're lucky enough to ever get hold of a bottle, um, new make and ginger beer, I thoroughly recommend it. It's absolutely standout. And we've just got a couple of questions from the audience. Chris asks, okay. distiller's malt versus brewer's malt and, and higher fermentability? Yeah, we've been using brewing malt, actually. Um, uh, we've well... I'm not quite sure yet, but um, the distilling malt is designed to have high yield. You know, that's been bred. But if you look at the Scottish malts, they get 410 litres of alcohol per tonne of malt. So they're kind of really genetically bred to have high yield. 
We haven't done that. We've used um, brewing malts, which have a, they've got a lower yield, um, more like 350 if you're lucky, um, you know, because so, we're kind of going flavour over yield at the moment. doesn't mean a bit later we won't try and get a bit high yield, but, um, yeah, we're quite happy to use the brewing stuff at the moment. Awesome. And you're pretty much bang on with the numbers there too, Dave. We're banging out sort of between 332 and 350 low on uh, malt that we're using. Good job. Good, good, good job, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like not I mean, we're not competing <laughs> with the 450s, but we're, yeah, yeah. we're well and truly giving it a red hot poke. That's for sure. Yeah. What was the I, other question, Oliver? I, I love how technical we got super, super nerdy very quickly. I might uh, peel it back a little bit. Dion yeah, asks, right. hey, yeah. Dion, good to see you, mate. Uh, uh, is your new make spirit the same profile when you first started distilling a few years ago? Okay, that's a, that's a pretty adapted good it over time. Yeah, we've kept it the same. Yeah, for the for the last four years, we had probably three to six months of trials. So interestingly, some of our first expressions, like the Coastal Stone Sherry Cask, it it's when our new make was developing. Actually, I'll talk more about that later. So yeah, six months of development, you know, trying different cut points without getting all nerdy again um, and the like, um, and different fermentation conditions. But we settled on um, quite a warm ferment to encourage, stress the yeast a bit to get lots of esters. And um, we settled on our cut points to get our flavor profile. Um, but we, so we, as Oliver says, we take the, the wort or beer without hops after five days, it's basically beer we've made from the barley um, without hops. Then we distill it twice in two classical copper steam heated pot stills, which um, um, I nicked the design. So I'm an engineer, chemical engineer. So I um, had, had the, you know, had to go over to Scotland and go to go to Ardbeg and all this sort of stuff and, and look at all the stills. And um, I kind of just reverse engineered the ones I like. So um, they, they, they're, they're nice and tall. They've got upward sloping line arms. Bottom line is it produces quite a uh, smooth multi spirit. It's got more reflux without getting too technical um, due to the, the geometries of the still. And, and one final question before we jump into talking about the flavors of the new make, uh, Ioni, evening. Ioni, I don't know uh, how that sort of comes up. There's a sort of rough mobile phone picture of the two stills in situ. Yeah. yeah. I'll put up a post, uh, a picture shortly, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll save it halfway through, Reggie. Yeah, uh, no, I only asks, uh, where, where are you based? Uh, Manly, okay. you know, whereabouts? So we're in Sydney um, and we're in the Northern Beaches. Um, and oh, I see Tim Gray there. Hello, Tim. Sorry, I just need to say hello to Tim. He used to work for us. Um, Northern Beaches, um, we're just north of Manly, which is uh, like a, a city beach um, in Brookvale, just over the hill, the closest industrial area. It allows you to put in stills like Reg was showing. We're, we're right on the coast. Um, we'd be about kind of like a 10 minute walk from the coast. There you go. Awesome. Well, let's um, dive into the flavors. Uh, we're already getting a couple of comments here saying one of the yummier new makes I've ever tried. Thanks, Andreas. Thanks, and, Andreas. Yeah. And Tom's saying very nice for a high ABV new make. Tastes a lot like Kate Byron's uh, new make. I, I haven't actually tried theirs either, but. Um, yeah, let's let's dive into yeah, the flavors. Yeah, we love the Brookies guys. Yeah, um, Kate Byron. Yeah, so it's got a kind of an estuary profile, but um, maybe Reg, you want to talk about the new one? He's he's good at describing. Um, I spend a fair amount of my day tasting. New yeah, you make it so. Yep. Um, and have been sort of lucky enough to taste it as low wines coming off on the wash side and new mate coming off on the spirit side. Um, so. One of the key notes we get on the nose when we run it is apples. We get a really sweet green apple aroma in the distillery. It's absolutely gorgeous to smell. And I notice the new makes that we're producing now are quite um, sweet and very subtle. I mean, they're not something that knocks the back teeth out of your head. They're, they're actually quite approachable in their own right. And um, we take a lot of pride in that, that we run those stills to a, a set way that we've used a bit of trial and experimentation over the past two years to get to a point where we tend to run a little bit quicker during some points of the distillation and slow it down through that hard cut so that we get an absolute maximum yield but we also get the flavors profile that we're looking for which is that sweet light 
something that's going to allow the barrels that we select to impart their flavor and do their work as well. Yeah, thanks, Rich. Definitely stand stand out on its own. Yeah, that's good. Well, um, there's a just one thing we do, which has been unusual, which Peter Bignall, if you've ever had Bel Belgrove whiskey, you might know the guy. He's fantastic. I love him. Um, he gave us the idea in that we, we do what's called a four-shot cut. So the stuff that first comes off, we don't actually keep it. We discard it. That's unusual. Mostly that stuff is recycled with the heads and the tails back into the still. But um, our idea is that, you know, we're just trying to purge out some of those very light components, you know, like ethyl acetate, like um, nail polish remover, if that makes sense. So we just purge a little bit out. So that contributes to the spirit as well. The fact that we just exit a little bit of that every time we distill. Uh, and then it's, look, that's just the way we do our cut points, which is when we decide to, you know, go into tails, et cetera. Um, but yeah, we put, we're really happy with the, with the new make. Um, um, it is a very sweet, multi, um, you know, green apple kind of estuary um, new make. I'm loving this comment from D uh, Daniel here. As soon as you mentioned it, I completely agree. He says, get that slight sourness you get from a green apple as well. Mm. Mm. 100%. And the aromas we get um, definitely could think of a lot worse ways to kickstart your days when that new make starts coming off <laughs> at around sort of half past eight. It's a beautiful smell and we always taste it to make sure it's, absolutely where we want it and i mean how can you complain it's an absolute standout um would drink it neat on its own but as i said if you can lucky enough to ever come across a bottle um makes a great ginger ale additive as well yeah um, quick question from tony uh is this the same as your north fort spirit uh no it's not it's similar though so those who've been around manly spirits for a while can remember north fort we um that's our we it's a white dog or it's a you know, it is a new make, but what we did there was we kind of three to four times distill it. We've got a thing called a reflux condenser on our spirit still, which we put in. So you can um, actually get he heaps of reflux and more separation on this spirit still. So with our white dog, we ran that hard, did a really slow distillation. And it's, so it's an extra kind of lighter, it's a bit more like a grain, like a more halfway to a grain whiskey. Um, you can just see the cooling water going into the, um, what Oliver's showing there. There's two little copper pipes up the top there. Um, they're going into the reflux. Uh, thanks, Oliver. They're, they're going to the reflux condenser. Um, but that was our white dog. And there's the, there's the, what do you call us, Reg? Roosters. The good looking yeah, a couple roosters. of good looking roosters right there. Look at that. Yeah, that's us. And then the last one I just want to show now. Is is that, we haven't aged a day, Dave. We look fantastic. No. No, that's me, you know. So there's the reflux condenser up there. It's got a little uh, sight glass so you can see it raining down. What it does is it kind of, you put the cooling water on these tubes and you see like liquid raining down and that's purifying the spirit uh, more and more. All right. So should we go to a, what do you reckon, Oliver, go to a whiskey? Yeah, well, this is why we're here to celebrate the launch of your very first, oh, right. uh, you know, single malt whiskey. Let's okay. do it. So this little... Little bottle that's kind of hovering around here. This is our very first whiskey, so, which is very exciting, and we call it Coastal Stone. So it's made by Manly Spirits, but that it's that's its that's its name, um, its brand. It's got this amazing bottle, which um, Vanessa, who's my my wife and who is the business partner, um, does all our product design. So she's an amazing, amazing creative. And there is the, the bottle, see all those dimples on the side? It's like a roading sandstone. The stopper on the top, if you can see that, is actually Sydney sandstone. Um, I didn't think we could ever do it. Well, I thought it was impossible. Um, Vanessa said you can, but uh, basically we use a, um, some people close to us who cut the, the sandstone into discs and we send them to Portugal, they come back. Anyway, that's the bottle, um, but, and it's coastal stone, that's our brand. It's all about the coast and the ocean and, stuff and, and the like, which is manly spirits, really. But we should taste the whiskey, hey? So grab that one. Have you filled that glass, everyone? Then you have. I'm a step behind, aren't I? Um, sorry if we didn't clarify before. The new make was 63.5%. What's the ABV of the, uh, the single the one we're trying? The Sherry Cast Coastal Stone is uh, 46 
getting a lot of comments, people saying, you know, beautiful bottle design. Uh, Tom, we are having the sherry. The yes, very the first. Sh- so the sherry cask, 46. I'm not sure how they were labelled. It would say sherry, I'd say. Sorry, let me just throw in the order of tasting tonight. So um, what's this all about? Let's have a little taste, have a smell. I've, I've jumped, uh, put some ice in it, but you can do whatever you like, bit of water, nothing, straight, whatever you feel like. I'm sure well, there's Dion. He's drank a bit of whiskey before, haven't you, Dion? I know he has a lot of hours too. Um, <laughs> Post COVID, Dion, we're due to taste those casks for yours. Yeah, he was, yes. We've, Dion's got about four or five of his little casks maturing at our place too, I think it is. Anyway, have a little sip. So this is what our new make has done in three to four years. So it's turned from what you had with that new make spirit, which is still fairly, it's not harsh, but you know, it certainly doesn't taste like this. So this is what thyme and oak does to that new make. Um, about this one, uh, it's a combination of 100 and 225 litre casks. They are classical Aussie ex-fortified casks. So um, they come out of Tasmania, Tas Cooperage and SA Cooperage. They're, they're the build up, the 100 litres are the ones that kind of build and, and Lark started where they're shaved and charred. So they're, they're ex-Australian fortifieds, which they break down into 100 litre barrels and they shave them and they char them. So they, they're super active, if I want to call them that. Um, you know, you get heaps of flavor quite quickly and um you know you can almost get too much if you if you leave them in for too long so what we decided was we we've blended the 100 liter casks with 225s which are kind of like a wine barrel if that makes sense a normal wine barrel you'd you'd see um they're ex um sherry as well or a pair as we now call it um and it's a blend of four-year-old hundreds and three-year-old um 225s and what was interesting is the, the old adage is that old is better, but as yeah. we're beginning to learn, that's not really always the case. Like, for example, the, the three-year-old three year bigger cast actually, to me and Reg, balanced this whiskey out. The 100 litres were kind of really full on, right? But uh, by putting the, the, the bigger ones in, it just kind of lengthens it and mellows it. Um, I mean, you might like your real flavour bombs too, but um, the the big ones kind of a bit more classical and a yeah. bit more spirit focused. Yeah, the hundreds are like your ADHD casks. There is so much going on in those barrels in such a short amount of time um, that paying attention to how the interaction between the liquid and the wood is occurring is key to those little barrels. And like Dave said, the larger the barrel, it's it's kind of more laid back if that makes if that makes sense it sort of matures a lot slower it imparts a different sort of profile the hundreds are very very um, aggressive in flavor transfer and then now that the seasons are starting to change and we can start seeing little drips of whiskey appearing on barrels here and there we know that we're starting to get um, difference in barometric pressure which is starting to move liquid across wood which is what we want it is yeah and um if you t- so our new make being light and fine our philosophy is that we don't need a monster barrel to hide the new make so generally we're moving to bigger barrels because we want the bigger barrels to showcase the new make spirit um that's what we're generally doing these early ones though the, these this coastal stone release it's called the element series we're releasing five of them over the next uh, about nine months um they're they're a lot of hundreds though so they're kind of tipping our hat to the to how we learned our whiskey making vanessa and i went down to redlands distillery um and did uh, the whiskey making down there um five years ago um anyway that's what this this one is so i hope everyone likes it uh i do let us know in the comments what you think of this one we're getting some it's i think it's old kempton as they've rebranded that's right 
for anyone looking oh, for some red ones. Yeah. Ah, there you go. You learn something every day. There you go. There you go. So strong cherry ripes in the oh. palate for me. I, I agree, mate. And Andres, that's uh, coming through. Joe says light and smooth. Mike, very tasty, not too shit house. Very Aussie <laughs> tasting note there. Good. I like that one. Good feedback. Like yeah, not too Nick. shit. That's that's a really good Aussie kind of. That means that's that's kind of good. Yeah. Um, Thumbs up. Some of, now someone earlier asked about did we change the new make spirit? Interestingly, in this sherry cask expression. Um, it's got some new make that we did early on where we ran our reflux condenser. Someone asked about white dog and how we made that. So we, this actually has some, uh, you know, kind of extra distilled malt in it. So um, we did that a little bit deliberately so that it would mature a little bit faster as well because the spirit is more refined. So this, this is a, you know, we're not going to make them like this. Um, so, you know, they're, they're special. Oh, yeah, and that reflux condenser does a fantastic job at refluxing, but it also adds considerable amount of time to your run. So it's a fine balance between trying to get the production parameters we're looking for to making the best spirit. But the reflux, when you taste that reflux new make, it is absolutely outstanding. And the whiskey that comes out of those barrels that has been through that reflux system um, is really very smooth. You wouldn't know you're drinking a 63, 64 ABV whiskey, that's for sure. Yep, though, although Reg is the production manager, if, if we thought it was the way to go, we would do the slow runs. 100%. But, but we actually like not running it because it leaves more flavour in the new make. Correct. So we're going right into it, right? So yeah. it, it serves its purpose to make something that's smoother, quicker. You can drink it sooner. Softer. Um, we actually like leaving in a lot of flavour for the barrel to mature for our whiskey. And I mean, as whiskey makers, that's what we do. We're looking for that flavor. For yeah, if you wanted something really soft, really light, um, your reflux is a way to go. But at the end of the day, we're making and handcrafting whiskey, so we want to impart not only the new make, but what barrels we select and how we think they're going to pair with the new make that we make. So you want yeah. that flavor, you want those ester profiles, you want it to be able to speak in its own in its own tongue, I guess, is the best way to put it. Yeah. We've cool. got a clarification question from Gerald, uh, just asking, when you say extra distilled, uh, do you mean it's been distilled three times instead of two or just a different batch of distilled malt? It means what you first, Gerald first said there, it's been distilled, say, three times versus two. Um, kind of the way it's generally described if you go to a, like vodka it goes through a column and every time it goes through a plate you count it as being distilled um, like 10 times distilled with whiskey we're going through you saw those stills before they're kind of shaped like this um, you don't have like these plates or something but the taller they are and whether they have a boil ours has got a, like an onion or a boil it's an onion head an onion that is like lots of surface area and that creates a thing called reflux which kind of what it's doing is it's going round and round. Whoops, the spirit goes up, condenses on the copper and comes down again. Every time it do, does that, it purifies it. So um, that's a long answer to probably there's the onion there. There it is. And they're quite tall. So um, like if you if you really know your whiskey, like some, I think Lafroig's or, well, sorry, I'll probably get it wrong a little bit, but if you look at some of your Scottish whiskey distilleries, some of the really meaty kind of strong um, whiskies, they've got like short and stubby stills where, I don't know, something like Glenfiddich has really tall stills. So you still design really by causing reflux and kind of how many times it gets distilled that influences the quality of the spirit a lot. I think uh, it's uh, Glen Morangi has one of the tallest stills Glen in Scotland Marangi, yeah. and they've got, um, yeah, one of the lightest profiles in whiskey. Right. So if you like your light profiled whiskey, go for the taller stills is, is the lesson here. Yeah. Until you have to clean them, Oliver. Um, and then you, you say all day you'd rather have short stills <laughs> than tall stills. I think you're the only one who can fit through the manway, Reg, because it's a 450. So uh, Yeah, I'll get in there. Anyway. No problem. Easy. Uh, <laughs> before we jump on to the next uh, whiskey, uh, Adrian's asked, sorry, I was looking because the, the questions are coming through hot and yeah. heavy, which I love it. Uh, what will be the quantity that you'll put to market? So how, how many Coastal Stones have you released, first of all? Yeah, Coastal Stone, so it's kind of limited. It's, it's about eight barrels. Um, and we're doing three batches, each of 1,000 bottles. So the total will be 3,000. Um, and batch one, which we pre-released, 
was only a thousand bottles. So three thousand. Vanessa wants Vanessa wants to say something. You come over and say hello, Vanessa. I'm just yeah, the real boss. I'm just the woman in the background. He's not the woman in the, the background. <laughs> so let me clarify. Co the, the question was how many how many bottles. The Coastal Stone is actually um, the brand that will be there forever, right? It's it's the brand. We, Manly Spirits makes Coastal Stone whiskey. What we've done is this um, series of five different are all part of the Element series. And the first one we've released, which you just had, is the Sherry Cast. And what we did is um, we've split it into three batches of that Sherry Cast. There was 500, oh, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 3,000, 1,000 in each batch. The first um, 1,000 has been limited to um, not going into trade. So you should never actually see batch one sherry cask in trade. It's been limited to um, our database, direct to the consumer and direct from our distillery. Yeah, we've got a little bit left and we'll sell that from the cellar door. But um, yeah, we won't put that into the shops. That's just, it's batch one. I don't know, but I think it's really special. It's the first stuff we've ever made. You know, we're only ever going to do that once. So Batch one, they're keepers. Yeah. Definitely. Five by two, one to drink now, one for later. Oh, That's it, yeah. You've got to have a keeper. Can I do this? Because this, everyone can, was told I was crazy. Can, can you hold it up closer? Okay. This is to celebrate being crazy buggers making whiskey, because it seriously is a, been a long haul. The sherry cast first batch comes in this beautiful container. Um, it's not throw away, right? You're meant to keep this forever to keep your whiskey in. And when you open it up, oh, so uh, which, what have we got in here? Whatever. So your little whiskey comes sitting like this. Closer. Sorry? Put it a bit closer. Ooh, there we go. Sitting on here in this little thing. Um, this is recycled like bamboo fast grain because I tried to do everything a bit enviro. Here, this has all got like fur in, not fur, but it's you know, <laughs> all nice. Inside, you've actually comes with your two nice thick wooden coasters because you should always never drink on your own because that's a bad sign that you've got a problem. I've so got a problem. Drink, <laughs> drink with your friends. Ah, Gerard, who's that? Gerard? He's got one. Yes. Woo yeah. Woo yep. <laughs> so <There he> is. <laughs> this was my little luxury that Dave thought I was mad when I said we had to produce it because they cost a fortune. But hopefully um, it will house all your future coastal citrus, coastal citrus, it's not coastal citrus, <laughs> that's, that's gin. gin, coastal stone whiskey. And, um, you know, when you go around to your friend's place, you can take it with you to share your dram. Well, firstly, Vanessa, congratulations on the, the release. I uh, love the designs, everyone in the comments jumping in. Oh. Uh, I did just want to highlight that you have actually set the trend, like ahead of um, Gladys and everything, you've made the perfect picnic, picnic kit. Whiskey. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We just need two uh, little shot glasses in the top as well. But... Uh, you know, provide your own glassware, but, you know. <laughs> that's the idea, drink it with friends. So, you know, like we went to some friends... For dinner on Saturday night, and we brought our bottle along, and we, you know, we ended the night by, you know, drinking whiskey. We we ended up by drinking the whole uh, bottle. Too much, but actually. But we anyway. won't go there. All right, I'm gonna say time. Let's jump on the All next right. one because you, you know we we have got uh, three more to get All right, through. What are we up to? So bourbon. let's move now to the bourbon cask. So if you put everybody um, pour a little bits into your glass. So bourbon cask whiskey is basically whiskey. I mean, we call it bourbon cask whiskey, but like the majority of Scottish whiskies are matured in next bourbon. Um, you know, ex Kentucky, all that sort of stuff, because the Americans are only allowed to use them once, because that's the law over there to give people lots of jobs, as they're very good at. Um, these are so this have a little smell. So you know, bourbon, um, American white American oaks, wheat, vanilla. Um, so it imparts, it's kind of a lighter style. Um, I think these are 200 litre casks. These are bigger casks. I've uh, got a bit to go. These are work in progress. So from now on, by the way, they're work in progress. So your bourbon, your Pinot and your ginger beer are not finished whiskies. They are out of the barrel 
Reg and I sampled them, uh, broke them down a little to take the heat off them. Um, these are to give you a feel for what the whiskey is going to be like in the future. So we are the very first people in the entire universe to try oh, yeah, our coming. That's right. That's right. Um, to have a little sip. Mm, so much, mm, much sweeter, much kind of more familiar, I'd say. Um, it's what ABV did we break this one? This is a 50, just for a bit of difference. We broke this down to 50 ABV. Um, I mean, I love, you know, being a whiskey drinker, I, you know, and, you know, most a lot of it comes from Scotland. You know, I, I love that American oak and sweet bourbon cask. Um, these are what's called first fill, i.e. they've only had bourbon in them and then we filled them. Um, kind of, if you look at a colour... Um, very similar reckon, to a bourbon. Beg your pardon? Very similar to a bourbon. Yeah. Um, the Scots would use second fill, third fill, fourth fill. Like if you look at Laphroaig or something, it's not that colour. It's really quite pale. So um, these are still very active casts. They're still... They're imparting a lot of... Um, American oak still. As we go on in time, we'll have second fill casts and third fill casts, and that will kind of um, then be more spirit forward and less cast forward. But this is a first fill, if that makes sense to people. I, it's only had bourbon in it before. And to see some of those casks come through that um, Heaven Hill, um, there's been a few that I've grown up drinking their bourbons and to smell them, and um, have had a little bit of experience making three grain um, new make. So bourbon, you can't really call it bourbon because we're not in Tennessee, but it is basically corn rye barley, which I've had experience with. And to smell um, those barrels pre our whiskey and to be able to sort of imagine where they've been, where they've come from, and then see our whiskey go into them and what the flavor profile and notes that are imparted by those barrels to our spirit is it's an amazing journey. It's really um, interesting to see how it'll pick up the vanilla notes, the sweetness, not quite replicating the bourbon, but has a lot of the same characteristics as some of your better bourbons for sure. So it's I'll a just, lot softer. Go on. I was just going to highlight two comments uh, that have just come through. The, the comments are like crazy. I'm trying to keep up with it all, but uh, Jamie says, this is great. I'd say work is complete rather than work in progress. So, and you, wherever you are. And then Adrian's yeah. saying, this is your first crack. Have mercy. I completely agree. This thing is delicious. Release it today. <laughs> Thank you for the feedback. Thank you. Um, our bourbon cast, we are, it, it will be released in about December. So um we do think it's nearly ready as well. So, you're talking about before some distillers use, you know, bigger, heavier casts to kind of mask the new make spirit. But bourbon casts, because they're so light, uh, if you have a terrible or subpar quality new make spirit, uh, and you put it in a bourbon cask, if it tastes average or mediocre, then that's because the spirit's average. But if the bourbon cask, you know, can't hide those flavors, and, and if people are loving it here, and I'm loving this as well, that tells me your new make spirits, you know high quality, if not, you know, top quality. So congrats on, on just this. This is a, a really great, uh, yeah. you know. So that's, thank you. That's But tasting the new make first kind of shows you how that's balanced with, you know, that American oak and bourbon over time, about three years, yeah, four years, yeah. I'm just going to go back to one more question, yeah. sorry. Uh, Andreas goes, what are the four other bottles in your Elemental series? So I might... They, okay, Element series. They So they are Sherry, which we've just released. And you can still buy. So, you know, we'd love every you all to buy some at the end of this, please. Um, but um, there in there, there's a bourbon cast. We're releasing that in December when we get our stoppers from Portugal. We're waiting for the next load of stoppers to come along. Um, then there's a Pinot cast. We're going to taste a work in progress Pinot here tonight. Totally different from anything we've tasted here. Pinot's French oak. Anyway, we'll get to that. Um, there's a port cask or tawny expression. And what have I forgotten? Uh, though, of Shiraz. course, there's a Shiraz. Uh, uh, they, and the, the backbone of all of these whiskies are 100 litre kind of Tassie style, shaved and charred. That's them there. Thank you, Oliver. Um, barrels. Uh, and th there'll be... So some people here, like... I know Dion, I'm not sure who else have, have bought the whole 
element series. So we'll send them out um, each expression as, as it's released over the next kind of six to nine months. We'll decide on the order depending on what, what's going on in the cast. They come out every two months. Too. About every two months, yeah. So if you're really keen, buy the, you buy the set and you get batch one of everything. It depends if you like. Like I'm talking to Dion here, but he's a collector. He calls it whiskey, <laughs> whiskey, whiskey annuation, if I've got it right. So, you know, he doesn't bother with super. He just collects whiskey. So some people collect batch ones, but if you buy the whole series, you get batch one of the whole lot. That's awesome. Just reading some of the tasting notes here. Emma says licorice all sorts on the nose. I Yeah, it's coming through. Apple note of the new make uh, seems enhanced. What else we got oh. here? Uh, powdered sugars on pastry, citrus icing, apple danish. Vanessa, we need to get some of these people to help us with our tasting notes. That's good. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and we're getting a couple of questions. So how long yep. was it in the bourbon cask for? Uh, this is about four years. So we we got, I'm, I'm speaking to Dion again. He happened to be in the distillery the day that 38 Heaven Hill um, 200 litre bourbon cast arrived. That, that was about July or June 2017. So we filled all those casts at that time in July. So this would be a bit over four years in a, in a proper size cast. Nice. Thanks, Ivan, for that question. And Chris uh, asks, can you pre-order the bourbon cask already? Um, okay, that's a good question. Well, we can always work something out. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you can pre-order if you buy the whole lot, that's for sure. You can buy, so you can, if you buy the Element Series, you can, but we'll, we'll take that one on notice, okay? Yeah, Vanessa's um, listening, so we'll take that on notice. Email Vanessa at Manly Spirits. Yeah, I think we should think about yeah, that. Start yeah. a database. Yeah. I'll um, look after you, know, you. Just, just email the distillery. Yeah, if you just kind of, if you haven't already, I guess a lot of people here are already, but just kind of subscribe to our whiskey, um, whiskey database on our website and we'll keep you informed of the release program. Awesome. Uh, all right. Shall we jump on the next whiskey? All right. So, um, so we've gone sherry bourbon, right? So they're kind of classic cast expressions. So let's now forget about the classics and go to completely different expressions. So last two will be a Pinot cask and a ginger cask, but we're first going to go to the Pinot cask. So grab your Pinot. So there might be some winemakers in the room. I'm not sure if there are, but um, Pinot is classically matured in French oak. So French oak as a wood is entirely different from that white American oak. Like the American oak is sweet vanilla type of profile. Whereas um, French oak is kind of spicy and tannic. So, um, so this kind of showcases the French oak plus the, the wine element, the Pinot. I mean, Pinot is a light wine, right? It's a, you drink a Pinot, it's, it's not a big full body Cab Sav or something. So to me, this is more about the oak than the Pinot itself. Anyway, have a smell and a taste and see, just see what the difference is. It's very luscious though, actually. I, I mean, mm. We had a question from Nick earlier on. I, I forgot to answer it uh, or ask it, sorry. You've got some different bottles in the background there. Those are your, uh, your, your gin and what, uh, vodka bottles, right? No, no, that you, 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 you've been pouring. Oh, these from. ones, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, if you haven't been around Manly Spirits before, where have you been? That's all right. Um, then you know, this is our, uh, I mean, this is our vodka. We just released a vodka, which we used our column still to do this, our grape and grain. But this is our just our, our bottle that we put our white spirits in, if you haven't seen it. I so this is hearts a bit from our... Yeah, interestingly, I, I know this is not whiskey, right? But this, our vodka, we used our whiskey making skills in that. So we... We took a mash bill of um, wheat, barley, rye, and mm -hmm. we fermented it. We mashed it, fermented it, and we put it through our columns still twice. Uh, that'd be about, that, right. It's about 15 times distilled. So, you know, we're a, that's what, you know, we're a distillery, so we can use our skills to craft different things. But anyway, that's vodka. We're not here to talk about vodka. Vodka tastes like alcohol. This tastes like whiskey. So we're not talking about vodka. 
Reg, when you are when you're drinking the Pinot, what what comes to mind for you in terms of tasting notes? Uh, the Pinots, uh, I mean, they they pick up the red wine characteristic for sure. Um, they still have like your classic plums and dried fruit in there. Uh, a beautiful whiskey, but light and sort of. You look at your sherry bombs and your port casks that are really flavoursome. This one's more delicate, quite well balanced. The balance between the wood and the fruit is quite good. Um, yeah, outstanding little whiskey. Well, to me, it's 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 got so much character. I'd like, I'd, I'm not sure if people want to put a few comments. I'd like to hear actually what they think of it. I'm just and about it, to, it is, to I read see them. a comment there that says drier. It's very it's a lot more astringent on the palate. That's the French oak, right? That's so right. that's the tannins. Um, so what I found is we tasted this actually. Even Vanessa's part of this, but every Friday we sample the barrels and we have a little taste, right? So we just pick it around a barrel. But um, early on, this was ooh, oof, like kind of hit yeah. you between the eyes. And then very but, astringent. But, but it's really starting to come on now. Now that it's hit kind of four years, it's really mellowing right out. They say the tannins take, you know, they'll they'll dissipate and the dryness will um, kind of go away. But um. Yes. Uh, comments though, please. Yeah. I'll, I'll read them out, but just to kind of step back a little bit, when when you discover a distillery you like, and, and especially to start diving into the cask, take note of which cask profile you really enjoy, because that will help you on your whiskey journey. So we mentioned bourbon, ex-bourbon casks, lots of vanilla notes, very common, you know, across the, the entire whiskey global industry to, to kind of use it. But if you like a much more drier whiskey, go for a Pinot sort of cask. If you like a slightly uh, heavier but um, sweeter whiskey, go for the Oloroso kind of sherry or Aussie Apera. If you like super sweet, go for maybe a PX, uh, Pedro Jimenez from Spain. If you like that really su sweet kind of whiskey so when you start understanding the flavor profiles that come from each of the casks can help you as a whiskey consumer make more informed decisions to find whiskey that matches your your palate but that's why we do these tastings to actually try uh before we buy to actually you know fig figure out what we enjoy drinking at home and and that's a really good point ollie um as distillers we know that no two palates are alike so we can't sort of pigeonhole ourselves into one flavor profile so we try and build whiskies across various expressions of wood that cater to all different palates. So you might have a sweeter palate. I know I have a much sweeter palate, so I always sort of go to the sweeter casks. Um, the Pinots, when they were young, very astringent and sort of not my cup of tea, but you learn to love them over time. And that's what we kind of do. The new make is like a constant. And then the barrels we use to tailor different profiles so that we meet as many or sort of cater to as many palettes as we can possibly cater to yeah. um, and that's where the art of distillation and the picking the woods come comes to the fore and like David said the difference between oaks from different continents your French oaks to American oaks to Russian oaks mature spirit in completely different ways um, so and that's how we sort of not manipulate it but we create a product that caters to various palettes. Loving these comments. So Adrian says, look how dark and warm it, you know, super appealing, gives you spring bay vibes immediately, makes sense of the French oak. Big hit of peanut butter on the finish from Nick. Super nutty on the palate. Robert says, creme brulee, the Pinot whiskey, delicious. Long finish, beautiful from uh, Antel, hopefully pronouncing that right. Daniel says, very warming Christmas cake, ginger, peanut butter, and a slight char. Very, very unique tasting notes there. Yum, delicious from Mike. Thanks. Uh, I like the simple ones too. Emma, blood plums and dried strawberries. That's, that's a really good point. On my first sip, I got that wave of dryness on my palate. But when I've come back on my second and my third sip, uh, the more subtle flavors, the more complexity of the whiskey and then the oak uh, starting to come through. So yeah, the, the dried strawberries are, are coming on, on that third sip for me. So whiskey is a journey. Take the time to you know have multiple sips, swell around in your mouth. Um, don't don't judge it on your first sip. You know, take take the time to listen to what the whiskey is going to tell you. Thanks, Ollie. Yeah, it's I'm actually really pleasantly surprised with the way the the Pinot is going. Um, these ones we filled uh, twenty four. Early on, we didn't have much money, right? So <laughs> cars are expensive. <laughs> They're expensive. Like like a little one hundred liter cask costs about eight hundred bucks or a thousand bucks. So um, we chose. You know, 
chose 20 or so of these babies. So maybe in a year's time, we'll have more Pinot coming, but you'll get the first expression as, as Vanessa is talking about in the element series early next year, they'll come out. And you mentioned before, you've just laid your thousand cask. Yeah. How, how many casks are you laying down a week and what's production like at the moment? Nuts. Yeah, yeah nuts. <laughs> yeah, I, I flog him with a, with a cat of nine tails. He's an ex-mariner, so, you know, he can cope with it. But, um, we, yeah, we've got four on our team, actually. We've got um, three, uh, three distiller brewers, if you, if you want to call it that. But, um, yeah, uh, about 25 to 30 a month. We're filling two, two, yeah. five and 300 litre casks these days. Currently sitting at a thousand and sixteen, so we're yeah, you're pretty much on the number there, Dave. Too um, as fast as we can make it, we're filling barrels. It's quite surprising um, from when I started to where we are now. We sort of turn over barrels a hell of a lot more uh, rapidly now than we did, um, but we are getting better yields because we've sort of gone back through the process and we pay a. We've looked at different areas where we can tweak and improve um, our system of process, which everything pays off in the end. We get better yields. We're making more whiskey. We're getting a better result on the new make. We're filling more barrels, which is what it's yeah. all about. Uh, an area that Reg, when he came along two years ago, has really improved at the distillery is cleanliness. So in terms of kind of cleaning the, the fermenters um, on a regular basis, the stills, um, it's kind of like it creeps up on you if you don't. So the team there, they're, they're kind of right on it now, making sure everything's clean and we don't get those kind of wild bacteria um, and, odd, and odd flavors. So, good on you, Rich. Cheers, Dave. I mean, and that is a, it's it's huge in your process. You, you really need to be on top of it. The wild bacteria, as much as they will impart flavor, it's it's a lot like a Russian roulette. You never know what you're going to get, whether it's going to be a nice ester profile or it's going to be completely rancid. And I know there's distilleries out there that have had, um, I, I'd say, a wake up call early on that that is one of the critical factors in producing uh, baseline quality spirit is everything has to be spotless. Like we're talking surgically spotless and, and that's what we do. Fridays we clean all day. That's yeah. run the spirit still finish off the last of the low ones and clean. That's all we do. And that's pretty much religion, how it should be. Yep. Oh, this is how you, you know, maintain consistency. It doesn't matter if you buy barrel one or 100 or, or 1000 or 10,000, you know the product that you're going to get is going to be consistent and quality at the end of the day. 100%. That's the go, Ollie. So how are we going? All right, we're nearly on the hour. So let's do the last expression, um, which is our ginger beer cask. Okay. I see people sculling their um, last little bit of the uh, pinot. So grab your ginger beer. So Tim, Tim Gray's here who worked with this for quite some time. I think, Tim, you just waved. Did you fill barrels as well when you were with us? I'm pretty sure you did, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. So who knows? Tim may have even filled this cart. Well, <laughs> Tim left a comment. I remember how excited we were filling barrel 200. Insane to think we're up to 1,000 already. Oh, yeah. Um, so this is... Um, well, Reg can talk a little bit in a minute, but um, in our... We're in kind of an industrial estate called the Wimborne Estate, and we've got some amazing brewers local to us. One of them is called Four Pines, if you've heard of those guys. So um, we work very closely with them. One, in terms of they help us with our mashing and brewing to make great wash, to make great whiskey. But two is um, we have a barrel swap program. Um, there's a guy called Garrett who comes around and he gives us all these weird barrels. So this one here was an ex-Starwood, actually, what was its genesis? It was probably a red wine cast to begin with, which Starwood whiskey put their whiskey in. Then, if you have drunk Starwood before, who are their red wine cast guys, then um, Four Pines put their ginger beer in. They've got a, I think it's Brookvale Union ginger beer. So they barrel-aged their ginger beer for their Newport brew pub. Then um, we put our new make in it. So... You know, this is a bit of an aberration, I suppose, but it shows you what you can do if you use really interesting casts. So let's, we should have a little smell and a taste, see if you can get the, the ginger. One of my faves, oh, this one. Firmly on the nose, yeah. I mean, yeah, smell I love it. it. Ginger. It's one of my faves. Have you tasted this one, Vanessa? Yeah. 
Sorry, I just got to give Vanessa some. Just pass the bottle, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. <laughs> so um, this is from memory, younger. It's just a little bit over two years. Um, and it's in quite large casks, about 300 litre casks. But um, we just put this one in to show kind of how an unusual cask can turn a, like Ollie was saying, decide on your cask. But these are kind of the unusual ones. So, you know, let's have a taste if you haven't already. Yeah, it's ginger on the nose. Very ginger. One of my faves. <laughs> um, wow. It's under, un, yeah, it's definitely ginger. 100%. Ooh, it's spicy. Quite, quite nice though, isn't it? It's kind of sweet and... Sharp, yeah. It's mm. got that... So it's young, it's two years. Fun. So obviously it's a, it's a work in progress, but it just shows you kind of how you can use unusual casts to make unusual whiskies. Uh, maybe, Reg, you want to talk about um, pandemics and excess beer and what we've done over the last year or so? The experimental casks are one of those... Um, personal favorite i guess uh pet project covid uh, as much as the last two years have been an absolute bust for everybody in this industry um what it has done is create unique opportunity for us um, as dave was saying garrett we're lucky enough to have four pines next door to us and they have considerable volume um, which played into our favor during covid so garrett one of their brewers and I have a fairly robust relationship. So we spent a lot of time chatting to each other and he was talking to me about, they had the first round of COVID we had 68 Kolsch kegs and they were going down the drain and being a distiller, you'd never want to see good wash. <laughs> I won't call it beer go down the drain. So we put it through the still and that gave us what we call our COVID V1.0 casks. Quite spicy, Kolsch beer. So quite spicy, very hoppy. The hop note was very hard to cut out. And I always had my doubts. So this round of COVID, same thing, but they gave us, I think the volume was around four and a half thousand litres. About a hundred kegs or so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there was three full IBCs and 63 kegs. So we this time we did Pacific Pale and Porter. So they gave us kegs of Pacific Ale, Pale Ale and Porter, which turned out a characteristic sort of new make, but quite hoppy. And then they gave us some things like Choc Banana, Creme Brulee, beers that <laughs> having grown up in working class pubs as, as a younger version of me, if you had have walked into some of those pubs around Piedmont and asked for a schooner of Creme Brulee, <laughs> um, it, it may not have ended that well so interesting beer that we put through and provided a really interesting profile um, so they've both been run through our Holstein through our wash still first and then the new make was created in our Holstein and have created some very interesting expressions the first COVID the hoppiness has gone right out of it um, it's really starting to mature into a standalone interesting expression in its own right um, and we plan on doing the second or the last run of our low wines this Friday. And will be very interesting to see what comes out. The porter that we distilled still has that porter um, nose to it. But characteristically, the new make produces something that smells exactly like a fresh beer mat. It, it still has that beer characteristic on the nose, but it's definitely single malt when you drink it. And it's those, those passion projects that um, create interest, diversity, and give you a fair spread across the market. So, yeah, some exciting things coming up. Yeah. It's a conversation starter at the end of the day. Yeah. So is right. it fundamentally a punt is one of the questions. Um, anytime you take 60-odd kegs and distill them off, it's a crapshoot. Um, you never know what's coming out. But, hey, something comes out a little less than average, we can always blend it off or tweak it up. It, it makes good blend stock. It'll have an interesting note in its own right. It just may not be suitable to what we're trying to do as whiskey makers. So um, crap shoot, 100%. So we do a little bit of crab shooting. I mean, we're just kind of, we're probably at the hour, but we're generally, the cast we're filling generally 
bourbons, 200 litre bourbons from Kentucky et al. Um, ex uh, Australian Apera and um, Tawny, when we can get hold of them. Um, they're pretty expensive and hard to get hold of. We love that luscious kind of stuff from those fortifieds. And, um, and some pretty solid ex um, Australian reds that have been recharred as well. So they're kind of our backbone that's going to come out when we do our main releases in future years. Oh, and the weird ones. Like, there, that Anglia Nico and the Anglia Enco casks that we have on the top front right. Oh, your Italian's side. fantastic there, Reg. Oh, I know. it's The me Italian might be um, a little iffy, but the whiskey is sensational. We sampled those a couple of months back, Dave, and they were absolutely... They're like Sangiovese. Has anyone been to Italy? Italy? Yeah. Great one. Yep. Yeah. And I, I don't know how to say it. Monte Pusliano, Angela Cano, I'm not, I'm not sure, but, but it's all, so we kind of do this mucking around at the edges where we get this interesting stuff and they'll end up as interesting whiskies. Yeah, you, you got to have some fun. Yeah. All right, gents. Uh, I'm going to launch a poll. Uh, everyone Ooh. get voting on your favourite whiskey for tonight. Oh. Uh, one vote only, so make it count. Uh, it's always hard to choose your favourite, but uh, in this case, let us know whilst... Uh, the votes are coming in. We've got a few questions coming in. This was asked earlier on, uh, and I was going to ask it anyways, but thanks, Nick, for re-asking. As a Sydney boy, we'd love to know more about distillery tours, cellar door, private casks. Uh, you guys are opening up next week under the changes with, you know, 70% Sydney opening up again. Well, how, how do we come see you, basically, and when? This is coming over. Yep. Uh, just to add to my stress, we're opening up. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the venue will be opening up on um, Thursday, Thursday night will be our first night. Then we do Friday evenings, Saturdays and Sundays. Um, it's all on our web, should be all on our website. So you just take bookings. Um, we'll also be cranking up our distillery tours as well. And then we will start, I haven't booked them in yet. We'll be doing specific um, whiskey. Uh, tastings. Um, anyone that buys any of the sherry cask or the element series at the moment, um, we are doing a live uh, virtual tasting for you all on the 20th, I think. Okay. 20th. Yep. So you all get to see us talk again and ask any of your burning questions. Tell some new stories. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, the venue's opening again, which is really exciting because it's been, um, it was very sad having it shut was and I, are you selling private casks still oh we do them we uh, it's not a big thing for us we like say dion we've talked about a few times tonight so um it's we if passionate people want to want to kind of lay down a few casks we do them but it's not a it's not a kind of a big thing that we push it's when people come to us and ask we do we're kind of but um we don't kind of that's not something that you'll you'll find to buy on our website but we if someone's really passionate, come and talk to us. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, Reg, question for you, mate. So Reg uh, from Gerald's asking, how has the direction of Manly Spirits uh, changed or evolved since you've joined? Mm. <laughs> uh, for better or worse? Um, I mean, or better. Different, different mindset because I come from a process background. So a lot of my direction has been to look at process and how we can improve process. Um, direction is still the same. We want to pursue manufacturing or producing the best whiskey we can. Um, but to do that, there are, there are tweaks we can make and ways we can drive the process to get the best result. Um, so that's what I focus on that and team building. We have a really young team of guys who are passionate about what they do. Um, it's getting harder to keep up with them as I get older, but they are passionate and that's what I love. And I see myself doing is passing the skill set that I've gained over a lifetime on to the next generation of guys that are going to distill. This, this is not a job or it's, it's a skill set. And as a distiller, I have a God given right to pass it on to the next guys that are going to distill. And that, that is where I come from. That That's always been, ever since day one that I stepped into the craft industry, has been about passing this skill set on, um, as well as making the best product I can. But 
I mean, we've been drink as humans, we've been drinking for 2000 years. It's, it's yeah, a lot about the skill set <laughs> and teaching them that it can't be rushed. It's not something that you can just turn out. You have to pay attention. If we ask you to do it the hard way, there's a reason we ask you to do it the hard way because it's right and it produces the best result. <laughs> and that's what wakes me up every morning. And that's why I keep doing what I keep doing. And I guess for me, um, as a woman, I really would love a, a part of my own personal mission is to get women to enjoy drinking whiskey um, and to be able to be produce a whiskey that's seen as a contemporary modern whiskey. Do you know what I mean? I really, I think whiskey is really going to start becoming that, um, yeah, not, not an old man's drink. It, it's a beautiful contemporary modern spirit that um yeah both hopefully women are going to get on board um, yeah that's great just that's going to push the price up they're going to drink all our whiskey that's oh. fine <laughs> that's good <laughs> yeah. no, i totally agree yeah. yeah totally agree just uh before i publish the results i got a couple of the comments questions uh few congrats actually so let me you guys should be applauded from nick what we've tasted tonight is bloody brilliant and all from sydney congratulations uh the new gin dave's wife not following that one adrian sorry ah alto asked on mute let me um put his hand up uh there you go got an in-person question Sorry, someone's saying something? Oh, Dave and Vanessa, I'm coming down next week on Friday. Um, yep. Is there enough stock or do I need to buy tonight? <laughs> That's the question. To buy stock. Oh, do I need to, do oh. I need to order tonight or can I wait no, till next Friday? Uh, I have allocated some to the distillery door because it would have looked very uncool not to have any, um, any there. There will be some. If you're coming down, there'll be some this there. Friday, yeah. 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 I'll buy you a burger at Truck Bar. So Mate, if there cool. isn't, hit me up. I'll, I'll leave you in a <laughs> yeah. car park. I'll run you one out of the All right. Thanks, Rich. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks, mate. And um, we, we've got just six bottles here at the whiskey list as well. So I'll put them up uh, tomorrow when I send out the email with the YouTube link for anyone. Um, uh, I'll, you will get first access uh, for coming to our tasting if you want to get the Sherry Cast Coastal Stone. We've got a, a couple of bottles put aside as well for the tasting. Um, so if you want to grab it, grab it then. Uh, let me just go through the comments that are coming in strong. All right, let me publish the poll. Actually, everyone wants to see this. Can we see that? Uh, share results. Mm -hmm. Ooh, oh, I'll take, close. I like that. You know what? I like that. The Pinot got up. Yeah, I like that. So so Reg, Vanessa and, and Dave at uh Back in the distillery, is that what you were expecting tonight? You know, no, I first... was hoping ginger beer, but <laughs> no, I wasn't hoping ginger beer. I'm really happy about the Pinot result because that, that's an example of a really full flavored, interesting cask that's not that available. So I'm glad people really like that. And then, as I said, we've got that's the one we we kind of went a bit heavy on in terms of buying them early on. So um, they're coming. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of those coming forward. I like the fact that bourbon. Everyone loves. That's the one that showcases our spirit. So, yeah, thanks, guys. The, the fact that people just, back. they love the juice is, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it doesn't matter who came first, who ran second, who ran third. The fact that yeah. people yeah. have embraced the juice with that kind of reception yeah. is. Yeah, we need something to get up every day and keep, um, <laughs> don't we? And, uh, and, and, <laughs> and seriously, um, without people like yourselves, we really wouldn't exist um, to, to play in the big game with big imports. Um, we just can't compete unless the consumer has, does the pull through. And we've had that with our white spirits. I'm forever thankful to everyone. And it's starting to happen again with um, our dark spirits. So thank you everyone, seriously, for supporting Australian craft distilling. Um, I'm just so proud to be part of what's happened in Australia the last five years. It's just phenomenal. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, like we're both involved with the Australian Distilling Association on, on the committee, but um, Australian Distilling's grown since we've been going over the last five. 
I mean, Paul's on the line here, which is the CEO. I think he's still here somewhere. There he is. Yeah, he was there. Um, it's grown from maybe 50 when we started to, I don't know, 300. So it's fantastic for our country, for employing people. We've, we've, when we had bars going, we'd employ 25 people. You know, we're, we're taking primary production. We're turning it into, you know, value adding into all this stuff. We, you know, we're exporting to not whiskey yet, gin, <laughs> um, to kind of US, Europe, UK. You know, it's great for the country to, you know, look at what we've done with wine. We can do the same with, uh, with whiskey for sure. 100%. Yeah. Adrian, uh, Dave's wife's name, who, who the boss is of this uh, amazing distillery, is Vanessa. Uh, the brain's behind the <laughs> branding. The uh all the naming the bottle designs all the cool label designs uh if you visit the distillery there's this giant artwork of a fish in a barrel uh it's amazing uh you'll go in and it's all vanessa uh i love the work vanessa just a Thank huge fan here yeah, Do you yeah. know what i was very fortunate to um have an awesome partner in my life who i awesome. love working with and i'm also i get to live with him as well so um, I just have to keep him not drinking too much whiskey. And and we just moved to an island. So those who are Sydney folk, we've moved to a place called Scotland Island. Scotland Island. Island. Yeah. True, to, true to brand. We had to only island to live on. It had to be called Scotland Island. Yeah. So it's only accessible by boat. We've got our little tinny, or a bit more than the tinny, but anyway. Yeah. So it we, gives we, us a bit of balance. We come into the distillery every day. That's true dedication. We fly across on the water and we have lost the boat once, but that's, that's another right. story. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to highlight one more comment and, and then we can call it a night because everyone's got, a, you know, families and everything to, to go back to. Thank you for your time. Tom says, for a first batch Australian whiskey, this is right up there with some of the more experienced Australian whiskeys. Great work, guys. And I couldn't agree more of that. I've thankfully, Thanks, my role in the whiskey list gives me a chance to try a lot of whiskeys and you've nailed it straight out of the door something super interesting you've got a, a huge lineup of amazing different casks and flavors as you can see people are super excited about the pinot the bourbon even the the ginger casks some of the more experienced ones so your work in progress is uh you know people have been begging to release it tonight as well um lots to look forward to yeah congrats as a first release this is uh yeah amazing whiskey congrats thanks. thank you thanks ollie for your feedback and thanks all yep all right, I might call it quits uh, again. Thank you for everyone. Tomorrow I will email a link to the YouTube as well as uh, a link to purchase. Uh, we've got a, you know, a few bottles of the first release. Uh, I'll double check if it's just the bottle or in the nice packaging. I can't remember. I didn't see what uh, you sent. Can... No, it's all the packaging as well, yeah. Okay, yeah. there you go. Well, you got the nice packaging with the coasters in that first one. And then, yeah, uh, sign up to Mainly Spirits, uh, jump on their website and jump uh, register to their database so you get um, first heads up when some of these work in progress has come up. Otherwise, if you're in Sydney and when you can get to Manly, um, yeah, visit the distillery. Um, support lots local. To support local, drink local. And, and thanks, uh, Reg, David and Vanessa uh, for, you know, an awesome evening. And we'll see you at the next virtual tasting or in thanks person, you, hopefully. Thanks, thanks all for guys. guys. Much appreciated. See you tomorrow morning. <laughs> in person. Yeah, Dave, I might just ask.